Hello. So what I want to talk about in this series of videos is what it takes to get to scale. Uh, I work with a lot of colleges and I, I read about colleges that are undergoing transformation with their math programs. And I've worked at colleges and it's just, I've seen a lot beyond just the ones that I've worked with, you know, and then, so I'm always thinking, you know, what is it that makes some of them get to scale and others not? What are the characteristics? So we're going to talk about um, some things in um, a couple of different videos about what it takes to get there. And I think the main thing is um, it's not as simple as we got a grant um, or if there was necessarily um, one person who was really into it, although that really does help. Of course, grants help. Neither one of those are enough, though. There, it, it, it does take more than that. So what I want to talk about in this video is one of the things that it takes to get to scale for, and, by, and let's define scale. When I'm talking about reforming um, a math program, a lot of times, uh, so let's let's take a common example. Uh, colleges will be using GPA for placement for maybe a course, and they might have a co-requisite for uh, they might have a section of co-requisite for say like their statistics. Like they may offer um, like this one or two sections of co-requisite for students who choose to take it. What happens a lot of times is if it's not at scale, meaning if it's not the default and it's not used um, across the board as the, you know, this is the this is the default, this is the given of what students would go into, if it becomes just an option, it often is hard to schedule, it's hard to get students into it. So the idea of scale is we are changing what the given is. And it's not going to be that, you know, everybody starts in like beginning and intermediate algebra. It could be everybody goes through multiple measures placement, which includes GPA, not just students in this particular program or students going into this particular course. It's used much more broadly. Um, same way with like, with like co-requisites. It isn't the given that everybody's going to start in beginning algebra. The given is you're going to start in the course, the co-requisite, and only in very small cases would you start in something like a developmental course. And it may be beginning algebra, but often it isn't. So that's what I mean by scale, that it's used, that we have some intervention. And that is the key to interventions really moving the needle is that they are used broadly. And it's beyond just a pilot and just a few uh, students and a few sections. It has to really be something that we use. So that leads to the first thing I want to talk about today. One, one really important aspect to get to scale is your culture. And that's a really daunting thing to hear because it's like, how do you change your culture? That's like, that sounds so overwhelming. But the reality is, is that the schools that get to scale and stay at scale, they make changes in their internal culture, how they do things. And they don't do that all in one day. It's a series of many small things done consistently. And it can absolutely be done. It takes someone to, you know, say, this is what we're going to be doing and, and committing to that and doing it over and over and over again. So I'll give you one example of, of a cultural change that, um, that makes things a lot easier to go to scale. One is how are we regularly going to review how things are working? And by the things that could be, what are the outcomes in the classes? How are the processes working between student services and faculty and administration, like between academics and student affairs? Like, how is all this working? Do you have a process? Do you have a way, like a regular, like meeting or task force or group that regularly convenes? There's a way to get that input, find out what's working and what's not, and, and have a, a protocol to respond to it. A lot of colleges don't. Um, it, because it's just not necessarily the first thing you think about, but it's one of those key things. And I think it's because I work with so many schools and that I really am like analyzing that now. Like, what is it that, you know, is the difference? And a lot of times it's these little things. They seemingly seem like, oh, that's nothing. But meeting once a semester and regularly committing to the idea that we're going to look at whatever data it is, qualitative in terms of student happiness or complaints, how are staff working with things, how are faculty working with things, all the way to like, what is the data saying? So there's, I'm meaning more quantitative data. Do you have a way to do that? 
And if you don't, the good news is you can create one. But it's things like that. It's little things done consistently over time that develop a different culture. And that's what it takes to not only achieve scale, but maintain it over time. So in the next video, what we're going to talk about is another aspect uh, that is needed, and it is it has to do with engagement. I will see you then.